Scenes from the Supreme Court here in DC today and the Empire State better have brought a darn good defense counsel because the home team are looking for another W for the Justice take on the NYXL here in our second match of the day. Welcome back everybody to the Anthem. I'm Mitch Leslie joined by Matt Morello and we're looking for the gavel to get brought down. <laughs> it's horrible. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're supposed to improve week to week. That, that, <laughs> get worse, but, uh, no uh, one said that had to happen. What? That I had to improve. Oh, I mean, well, I mean, that's what you should try and do. If the team's going to try and improve, you may as well. Are they? Well, yeah, I mean, some of them are. Speaking of, I mean, speaking of mean. teams, speaking of improvement, I mean, these two rosters now, the yeah. Justice finally get their first win at home yesterday, Matt. So they've got to be buoyed by that. Considering this is their second stopover, the fans really getting behind the team, and, and you, you see them up there being driven by the energy. It helps a lot. They're going to need it today, though. Yeah, this one's going to be much tougher. Uh, NYXL is a different beast. I think when you look at some of the heroes that we've seen being played throughout the weekend, they can put together a lot of different comps. And we were talking yesterday about teams that can put together some of like the slower compositions where you want to play a little bit more bunker. NYXL can definitely do that with the players they have. They can also play aggressive around somebody like Sabio B on the Tracer. What are your takeaways from seeing Washington play yesterday, Matt? Obviously, there's an improvement there with them sort of managing to take a victory, but they definitely, uh, there were moments of shakiness still from them. Yeah, I mean, look, it was not like the smoothest of victory against Boston. And I think what they, what they did well was they took advantage of Boston's mistakes, where Boston was out of position a lot of time trying to overextend. They were using ultimates a little bit carelessly where I, you're not going to get that today. NYXL is not going to be giving away ultimates and you know, kind of playing out of sync. They're, they've been playing together for such a long time as a roster. So can you win those clean fights head to head? I think that'll be a real test for the Justice today. Spend some time speaking with players. There's a lot of teams that are trying to play a dive composition. Yeah. Some are trying to play a counter dive composition or one that uses Orisa. Teams are losing to dive. They're trying to play it, then they're running up against these counter dive comps themselves, and then they're struggling. So it seems that you know teams haven't quite decided on what is the very well, best way to play right now. Well, or we haven't really seen teams like adjust their strategy like dramatically in games, right? Where a lot of teams you'll see come out and they'll run dive, and the other team will run counter dive. And that's all you see. Yes. The, the team that's running dive never tries to switch to even something if they're that's they're losing in that. Right. Matchup. Even if they're losing, they don't seem to try and switch to something that would be like uh, you know, maybe like an Orisa May and something to walk them back and push them back further and play the, the match game that we've seen so much in the Overwatch League in the past. So that's really interesting to see this week. But let's talk about the NYXL in the era of hero pools now, of course, with McCree, Widowmaker, Reinhardt, and Moira unavailable for selection. We know they have a deep roster. We know up until this point that deep roster, those members have been performing very, very well, despite them obviously faltering slightly at the start of the season. Uh, well, look, with what you've seen so far, I think you can put together really any type of look. You can have you know, Animo come out and play the Brigitte. You can have Jonak play like a Zen. And then uh, you see all of the damage dealers they have, right? And then also you throw Hotba in the mix on the D.Va. They can play so many different heroes at a high level, where you look at somebody like Nene, right? Who can play a, a lot of the hit scans. Tracer as well. You have Savio B, kind of the same type of hero pool. Libero can play so many different heroes. Who are you? Like, it's almost built like the shock, where you have so much uh, depth in terms of the damage dealers. It's definitely going to pay off when we get into hero pools deeper in the season. Drakes is something we haven't seen a ton of up until this point, but we know that Sabio being someone who features on this list with a very high final blow to death ratio is an aficionado when it comes to that pick. There are moments, clutch moments, in the past two seasons where he comes on board, he comes onto the field and shows off on that tracer. So that's something to definitely be keeping an eye on. But I'm hearing whispers, Matt, and it's time to get this one started, oh, make okay. this one happen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise now as we bring to the stage the New York Excelsior. New York already has spent some time at home this season, so they are ready for a bit more of an adversarial atmosphere, Matt. Yeah, it's uh, quite interesting. The Washington crowd getting pretty hyped up here. Let NYXL hear it, but you see Mono walk out from the back. He's just all smiles. He don't, he don't care. It's, they're, they're coming in here. They have one game this weekend, right? They want to come out. They want to put on a show. They want to destroy. Got to get back on the train, head back to New York. Ain't far for them to travel in just the one game this weekend. Means that they can focus all their attention on it. Save the in the lineup here. Uh, crucially, Libero after appearing last week. Many people ask, where is he? So a lot more of who are you in the roster? I'm so excited. Uh, 
uh, you know, obviously as a caster, but even as a fan, to just get to see Sable V play Tracer, potentially, uh, even something like a 76, where uh, that's kind of the hero. You look back in Overwatch League and just Overwatch in general, like so many crazy clutch plays come out from Sable V on the Tracer, where it's great to see him actually be able to play it again. And then uh, what do we see out of Jonah? Do hey, we see the Zen? It's it's Zenyatta and Brigitte right now, and you know exactly where Jonak's going to be. On the break, right? In right? His the wheelhouse. Break. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll, use, they'll use him on the break. Yeah, Animo Zen, no. Jonak's going to be right in his wheelhouse on that hero. When he gets to display his classic brand of dominance, and of course, Animo now will get to flex that a little bit more, kick the calling strong across the rest of the team. So this is a New York that Matt ostensibly looked primed and ready to do damage. And then you also think that, you know, they have Nene and who are you on the bench right now? Which is like those two players that potentially start on every other team in the league or get significant play time. Uh, it just kind of goes to show you how much New York has kind of retooled in the offseason. Uh, obviously, you know, adding who are you, adding some other players right. back to really try and make a run for it. And now it's time, of course, every great team needs a great rival. And for the hometown crowd, let's get ready for that catchy tune and hear it for your Washington Justice. Some noise and get loud for your Washington Justice! First out on damage, number 21, it's Tuba! Next up on tank, number 28, it's Early votes! On tank number 37, let's get loud for Raw! On support number 31, it's A! Also on support at number zero, get loud for Ark! On damage, number 27, it's Stratus! And finally, at number 11, the one, the only, One more time, make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, for your 2020 Washington Justice! <laughs> Starting lineup, take your seat.
That's right, I am available for stage hosting services, but I have to do it from the caster desk. <laughs> and I want to stand up here. You, stand here with oh, you can only do it with the headset on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's much easier yeah, this yeah, way. You're, you're, much, you're much more dangerous with the mic. It's, it's easy when you guys are facing that way. <laughs> yeah. Re really dangerous with the mic and mobility. As long as you're tethered by the cable, you're good. <laughs> but uh, no, the Justice haven't seen really anything much different in terms of starting lineups, right? Uh, this, is a, this is their best look that they have so far. And the core he was popping off yesterday on the tracer. I thought Stratus also showed up big. Map one, he was not really that effective, but after that on the Sombra, he was getting a lot of good usage out of his EMPs, his hacks, and then that's where you really sort of saw the Justice click. They started to play much better. And this team yesterday really, really gelled a lot. I mean, uh, Elivoed out there, he has a hard job, especially, you know, when you are trying to toe the line between playing a dive comp or trying to be reactive to dive. When you're attacking, and you're playing around that Orisa, and you don't want to be the one that starts off the fight, but you have to be the one that brings the action to the enemy. It's hard to navigate. He's out there looking like young Michael Fassbender, young Magneto, <laughs> just making it happen. He's looking real, real good. But again, this is going to be one of their toughest challenges so far, Matthew. The NYX all look crisp and clean. It will be Nepal to kick us off here, and if we need to, we'll have those last two maps. Maybe onto Horizon and Li Zhang Tower. It's also interesting to see uh, potentially maybe the Justice after yesterday. Obviously, they win, but do they go back and look at some of the other comps that teams played in the day and said, hey, we can incorporate that if NYXL pulls something out like that? We see like a dive. So it'll be really interesting uh, how that match yesterday potentially pays off here for the Justice as uh, both teams have an opportunity to make some changes. We remind you of the unavailable heroes, thanks to me, Widowmaker and McCree are gone. Nobody wanted to see them big, anyway. Big pogs, Matt. Big pogs. Yeah, no, I yeah. didn't want to see that at all, man. Yeah, no, nobody wanted them. All right, Ark on the Lucio early speeds them out, and now we have our Coalesced meta. Uh, we have our Zinyana and our Brigitte. Jonak is back on the Zen. Yeah, both teams on the Tracer and the Sombra as well as Get a little bit of a look of it early on, uh, and t pay attention to the top left, like where the uh, HP bars are. Is they loaded up Savio B with some armor packs before he went in. Just make that tracer even harder to take out. It's dangerous to go go alone. Take these. Okay, they've actually found Manu pretty low on health. Manu's able to survive. Just enough time for him to get towards that mega health pack. Jonak does fall though. Ellie Boat after Corey pressuring down that enemy Zenyatta. And now Raw is caught in the thick of things here. All of the Justice playing fairly close together now. It's up to Savio to try and pick them apart here. You'll notice that Mano is on your screen around that mid pillar. Down about half health. Hotman's here with a Discord Orb, but needs to be careful. That's the D suit on Ellie Vote, though. And I tell you what, you lose Jonak at the beginning, but the kill on Akori is even more important that NYXL gets. That's a lot of the damage gone from the Justice. They're able to make it an interesting fight here is they do not have any tanks alive, though. So this should be the point that goes to New York first. 4v5 for New York. They have that advantage. Corey managed to palm up a pulse bomb in that first fight. Well, where does it go? It's also, I mean, the difference in terms of the yeah, damage right. between the tracers, right, is about 300. So you kind of get a sense of how much that first death would work. Corey had recall. He didn't use it. He was down to 20 health, but Birds of Steel holds on to it. He's able to stick around to fight Animo with Tracer. It's really about being in the right place at the right time when you can't solo kill a lot of these more durable or more slippery targets. The Justice end up using a rally to end up getting these kills. So Stratus will take out Mono towards the end. The fight already pretty much over at this point. They're just kind of getting some players lingering around. Now what do you decide to do, right? Both teams have EMP. You kind of play this dance around each other with the Zenyatas and the EMP. You want to try and connect with that Zenyatta, not have the Transcendence go off, get really good value out of that EMP. It'll be very interesting with both teams having Transcendence and both teams having EMP available here. Drodark starts on the high ground, an early pick or a Discord Orb stick could do the job. Corey, though, has lost his Pulse Bomb. Hotbar slurps that one up. Stratus again, his EMPs yesterday were impactful, but he was walking up and just pressing Q. Is it going to be so easy for him this time around? No need to use the ult here. His team have been wiped clean off of the point. Uh, and that is such a great setup there from NYXL. So like I was talking about, you don't want to go in and get an EMP and the Zenyatta just hide, right? What they do is they launch in hot for self-destruct and it pushes both supports, uh, Arc and Aim God, out to about the staircase. And then Mono jumps right on top of them. And then Aim God's in a difficult situation. Do I just pop Transcendence to save myself because I'm getting Primal Rage and getting blasted back? Or do I just save it? At that moment, that's when Libro gets on the point. EMPs the four other players there and you get a good usage out of it. 
Again to the back line is Sabio. We look how close Ark is straying to M God. He knows how dangerous his previous team they can don't be. Get the Zen though. Transcendence for Jonah. He's able to keep his team alive, although they got EMP'd by Stratus. Discord Orb on Raw, but he's not the focus right now. It's Aim God pushing up. Gets one on Jonah, and then hits Q. It's Transcendence forward, and the Justice love a bit of momentum. They're all over the top of Hotbar. And although that EMP didn't work out, Jonah had a chance to counter it. He gets picked off by Aim God. And you gotta imagine that. This is like an old guard and new. Aim God would love nothing more than to try and style on someone like Jonark in this matchup. You, you will get to 75% here for NYXL and counting. But yes, I mean, it's a great use of the Transcendence by Aim God. You use it, you push on forward, you push NYXL back. And look, you're not going to be able to win the, the fight if you're NYXL. It's all the, tr the Transcendence healing. You don't have like a speed boost of a Lucio to get out of the way. You're really kind of just in the water at that point. Libero, no closer to EMP than Stratus is right now. Raw, careful, stunned in mid-air, but he's still found Jonah. A lot of damage off the table for NYXL now. they are got to make do with their two DPSs, one of which they've been able to find Corey. It's a 5v5 now in the rally. NYXL, they want to commit. The Justice are already at 84%, and it's counting. That's two for the captain. Savior will be down to aim God. And although Ark is able to find one, it looks like the Justice will just stall this out as long as they can. Not really attempting to clean up the NYXL at this stage. Ellie Vogt gets a resuit to help him stick around, and that will get them to 99. Now New York had to commit, and they had to spend on this fight. And that's the EMP. Manu stunned up, then hacked. He can't jump away. Libero goes down, and there's only four left for New York to work with. Aim God's close to a transcendence. Corey may have a bomb. Hack on towards Hot Bar. He can't fly away. Just waddles off. Takes a lot of damage. And Jonak is down. A justice open the bank account here on Nepal. I know yesterday, uh, Stratus, he was able to get an EMP off as Color Hex was throwing out his Blizzard. Love if we get a shot of this, but he actually comes from the backside. Him and Libero go for EMP at like just about the same time. But who was first? Uh, and I believe Stratus gets it off first, and Libero just wasn't able to get his off. And, uh, I mean, that's it's great timing yesterday, great timing today. Let's take a look at this. There it is. Libero, you know he's going to EMP this. He has to. You see the EMP goes off. Devastating! Stratus right there. Yep. Negates the EMP that comes through. It's just perfect timing there from Stratus yet again. And just as everybody expected, the Mator of Bjorn combination will come out here. Stratus already using Ice Block early. He took a little bit of poke damage as he tried to get across. You see Manu jumping away from the fight. He doesn't want to be frozen. The NYXL group up here inside the small room. They do have the brick to keep them protected. And look, I mean, the Torridor is like a little bit of a meme, right? But against like the dive compositions, it's no it's joke. very strong. It is no joke. And especially on a point like this, like look at all the close quarter area here. You set up with a May, the Arisa, the Torbjorn turret, a lot of denial. Could be very difficult to break. Well, it denies flanking roots, Matt. It's a, you put yeah. a turret at an off angle, face it behind you, and it's as good as a DPS hero, especially against Tracer, who can't avoid the shots and may have to force recall from a turret. There it is! Jonah couldn't escape. The turret locked onto him and the hole was enough. Uh, you and Jonak was accepting his MVP award. He didn't think two years later he'd be taken <laughs> down by a, a Corey Torbjorn turret. On the the ball. times have changed, uh, Matthew. Time, time, times have most certainly changed. Just, just as you get up to about 30% and counting. And you, you have Molten Core coming up for Corey, which when you have that small point, you can pretty much cover the entire point. Matt, this is a tough job for Sabi Olby. He's going up against an immortality field, and of course, the May. Hard for him to find individual pickups when Aim God can quite easily save a life with the drone. Pulse Bump thrown up, Raw's able to get away from it there, fortifies, but it's still Discord, and he's taking a ton of damage. Can the Justice respond? Oh no! It's like a pizza oven in there! Hotbar gets put in the darn smelter. I, I mean, they do end up investing Blizzard and Molten Core there, right? Uh, you trade two of those ultimates for the Transcendent, so we'll see if Bjorn can battle back. Libero now coming with a tactical visor. Looks like Raw doesn't have a shield, but it was the sound barrier from Mark. Shuts down the Soldier 76 ultimate while Libero is getting rid of a turret. He needs to kill more than inanimate objects. 
if the NYXL are going to take this point. 82% and counting, and Sabiobi has a pulse bomb. Ellie Boat gets desuited, then he can go for it. But the Divo is being kept healthy. There we go. Drops off a little bit of a good fire present, but Ellie Boat's able to get far enough away to prevent him from being taken down before he could reach suit. Well, but look at this. Meanwhile, Torbjorn turned on the other side. So much point control for the Justice. Rules under a lot of scrutiny, though. Immortality field thrown down by Aim God, but Jonah gets rid of it, and there's Hot Butt. The relief valve is finally activated, and the NYXL can breathe for now. I, I think for the Justice, you probably switch off Torbjorn here. So it looks like it. Say it ain't so, man. Yeah, Roar will go over to Orisa. And Corey will play 76. Is uh, Torbjorn is not effective when you do not have the point. Uh, very difficult to like, kind of like push forward and retake and deploy new turrets all the time. Great. Self-destruct baby from Hotba. Not too surprising though, as Hotba always has pretty strong self-destruct. Man, I've heard through the grapevine that Corey has good aim, so this might be where he wants to be. Mano, oh Mano, has to use a shield to keep himself alive. A lot of damage from the Justice, maybe he wasn't expecting the 76, that Helix Rocket burst damage to take you by surprise, but now Corey's on the other end. He runs away, but it's a Blizzard now, a defensive one. The Justice able to sit back and watch it all freeze. Roar is taken down and Manu's just trying to stay away from the ice. He's done well to do so. Livero on the high ground with the tactical visor now dueling out with Corey, but doesn't want to face him down one to one. You know, we never really talk about like, uh, Brigitte's, right? Other than like, you know, the rally, the armor pack. Whatnot, uh, last but... year we talked about it plenty, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, that's true. I have just erased it from my memory. <laughs> uh, but when they're trying to go get the high ground and they get mono low, you had the Justice, they were pushing up. They were running the Orisa at that point, right? And it, it's a very dangerous situation if the Justice would have been able to get the Orisa on the high ground, the shields start to barrel down. Anibal actually lands a whip shot and knocks Roar from the high ground to the low ground. That's why the Justice weren't able to set up. Again, playing outside of that uh, jump cooldown against Winston's is crucial. Elevate, oh man, he's struggling. Corey can't even peek out properly with his tactical visor. That's called respect, baby. Manu dives in, throws his own shield down. Now Corey has a little bit of space to work. Savior will be constantly nipping at their heels, trying to flank here. The Justice turn their focus to the Tracer, and they catch him! Aim God sends an orb straight into his forehead. And time to look at tough for Manu. He is discorded. Aim God now on the point, stun on Hotbar. He has to go for the self-destruct. He needs his mech back. It's overtime, and the Justice are in the driver's seat. Animo trying to shield up. He can't hold them back. But now Jonak just skitters on through the point, transcendent speeds him up and he gets overtime going, but he doesn't want to peak again. He's got no choice. The Justice starts strong. And Aim God is pointing across the stage right at his nemesis. It's a huge map one win for the Justice. I think obviously everybody outside of maybe the people from Washington here think they're underdogs in this series, but they started to really put it together the last three maps. And yesterday, they come out and get an early map win today. And YXL could be in trouble against this Washington team. Stick around, this one is going to be epic. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Washington Justice's first home center 2020, the final day. The atmosphere in here is electric. Corey looks so cool, calm, and collected. This guy's just got outrageous talent. Such a superstar level player. Oh, J Mike walked right into it. Washington Justice gonna take map number two. When it all looked like it was going to be wrapped up in a neat little ribbon for the Washington Justice, it's just not enough. Brutal full hold from the London Spitfire. Washington are not out of the pan just yet. The fire is still burning. Raw, you absolute bad man. He hits it when they needed it. What an unbelievable match. And the London Spitfire are going to take the series, completing the reverse sweep against the Washington Justice. Yeah, definitely some painful memories for the home team after that match. In reverse sweep by the London Spitfire of all teams, but uh, Matt, something tells me that they uh, yeah. had some leisure time and managed to turn around the morale. Yeah, I, I mean, look, obviously nobody wants to be reverse swept. It's a horrible experience, but oh. Yep, this is uh, some time off. Oh, is, this, is this what they did? I was going to talk about maybe some strategy, but no, they no, just, no, no, they no, just no. Rode, yes. rode boats. That's, That's right. how you saw it. Yep. You ever ridden a boat? The last time uh, I saw you on a boat, you were paddling around the London Spitfire play. Right, right, which could have potentially prevailed London to that reverse sweep. Matt, that could be us, but you playing. <laughs> I mean, look. I don't like I don't like the water. <laughs> I mean, so so I mean boats. Hey, I mean it keeps me uh, keeps you dry. The, the water keeps yep. me dry. Yeah. So I mean I'm I'm not opposed to boats. I think it's a look like a great team building exercise. Uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll have like a little casters retreat. We can all get out on a boat together. Oh yeah. Uh, It'll give you another thing to just not turn up to. Yeah yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm the king of hey I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right back and then I go oh, home. You are. But, I mean, like yesterday we heard the comms from Mark. He said, hey, guys, just be careful. Yeah. We got full held on Dorado. Right. Don't get ahead of yourselves at all. They were 2-0 up. Stratus looks like he's dialed in right now. Just that but, which, inhuman focus. Which is interesting, but right, because you, you win map one, the crowd goes crazy. You have the momentum of, like, a, what, a four-map win streak after yesterday. And it's very hard as a player not to kind of, like, get carried away with that, especially in this type of environment where you have, you know, the the entire home crowd behind you, everybody's kind of booing the NYXL. It's really kind of difficult to stay level-headed in situations like this. And with the format being so new, uh, it's something that I think players are going to have to deal with over time. But that's where somebody like Ark, right, pays off. Like somebody who's experienced, somebody who's been it, through it before. Of course, we have a substitution here in map number two. Nene is coming in at DPS for Sebiobi. Does that mean that we don't see Tracer, or we just see someone else on Tracer, man? Uh, I mean, maybe you just see somebody else on Tracer, as uh, Sabel B didn't didn't have like the greatest of map in map one, uh, but also Nene can play a lot of other different heroes. Uh, if you wanted to play uh, like a Mei with like a Hanzo here, if uh, you're gonna play like Dorado, right? You would probably run Libero Nene, like that would make a lot of sense. Where uh, Dorado, a decent amount of high ground, a little bit longer range sight lines, like. Uh, from point A to point B, you're probably not going to play as much Tracer, especially on the offensive side, because you can't really access that high ground as easily, and that's really what you want to fight over. Maybe you want to play Hanzo, maybe you want to play uh, something with a little bit more mobility. Bit of verticality, verticality perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Farah? Question mark? Question mark, question mark? Are yeah, yeah I don't know. I mean, against, without, without hit scan? Farah on second point on Dorado is really difficult because the defense has such great access to they high have their own balcony. Yeah, yeah, that the verticality doesn't really make that much difference. Like, on the, now, on the flip side, on first point, when you have to get the cart moving, no Widowmaker sitting in those long sight lines, right, where Widowmaker can hide made Farah's life very difficult. You could potentially see something like a uh, Farah on offense. Hotbar as well, self-proclaimed new big boss of New York. And there is Jonark, who, I mean, you, uh, it feels like, we'll do the eye test here, it feels like he got taken to task by Aimgod on that last map. A lot of Zen on Zen kills, a lot of them coming from the side of the Justice. It looked like he struggled a little bit. 
When your team loses two points pretty convincingly, you're going to struggle. I mean, uh, that's, it's, uh, it's not like you can just kind of sit in the back there as Zen. He actually had more damage. At least I try uh, and I believe, hide my bias for Philadelphia, Matt. You just don't even bother. For Philadelphia? Yeah. yeah. You all right? Well, what do you mean? Yeah, I said at least I try and hide my bias for the team that oh, I don't oh. You don't even try and hide it. Mate, he was getting oh, kicked well, off no, first in those I mean, fights. Yeah, so Dorado will be the next one. But me and Jake were talking about this in the back, and it was like, yeah, it's so difficult to look great when, you're, when your team is kind of getting rolled on like different points. Is this a matter uh, where Zen Yada can shine, it, do you think? It, it is, in, it is, but it, it, it is when your team has control and you're not, Zen's not getting dove on, not worried about Tracer flanking. And uh, you can see why we see a lot of Tracer because uh, McCree's not on the pool this week, Widowmaker out, Reinhardt and Moira too, where you know it makes it very difficult in certain situations to really see like the impact of a player like Jonak, right? Because when the other team's playing like, let's say a dive for instance, and he's alive, he is going to just start letting the discords fly, just pumping out damage at range safely. When he is the dive target, the dive is successful, he's going to be often dead in a lot of fights first. Uh, he, he's not going to be able to put down the damage just off the back of not being alive. So. What do you reckon? A bit harder as well to have to be the Zinyata on the team with the Winston and not the Orisa? feel like you have a little exactly. bit less safety. You don't have a shield. Yep. Uh, you're relying on your Brig. Your Brig also needs to kind of give armor packs to your squishies that want to go in and attack them. So it is much harder. As Five, four, see, three, Justice on one. offense first. Oh dear. And oh, in, Orisa, deja vu. in Orisa Roadhog, Sombra Tracer combination. Oh dear. Super interesting. And that may have just been at the beginning to try and get like a halt plus hook combination up on the high ground. Matt, you called yes. it. Look at this. Because you would, I mean, okay, you don't have to play hero pools. You can just go into your comp games at home and understand that. Uh, Sombra Tracer, Roadhog, Arisa, yeah, that, that ain't gonna work. So, good setup play there from the Justice. They probably saw that NYXL likes to set up on the high ground there at the start. You're able to manufacture a pickoff. Raw now having switched over towards the Winston. Looks a little bit happier here and that. You've got to be careful in that small little room. Both main tanks trying to make an impact, but Angot, huge biotic grenade. Not a darn thing that Animo or Jonak could do about it. Those Inspires, the passive coming from Brigitte, get turned off. Nicely done and great counter. It's Corey is cooking. What's he cooking, Matt? What does it smell like? Oh, I mean, he's just serving it up. That six of them, four final blows, just the first fight for Corey. So, kill participation on everybody for last hits. And take players out. It's, it's really kind of what Tracer's is about. Uh, look, uh, Tracer's going to have a decent amount of final blows because everybody else is putting down good damage. You You're finishing the good kill. Yeah, you see the good synergy with the Winston. You're going to see Tracer get a high amount of those final blows. Yeah, Roll's getting a ton of value right now. NYXL so closely grouped together, he's got about 30% of his team's damage just right. because he sat there with a Tesla cannon inside. Pulse Bomb dropped and looks like Mano's able to avoid that. He jumps away and actually might recommit with the Primal Raid Shift. NYXL have to play more aggressively on defense here. They're playing a dive composition as well and it's working out. Hotba is able to deal with Stratus. And Raw, over the rainbow he heads back to sport. Yeah, NYXL just needed a fight win in the worst way, right? You lose that one, the car continues to go. The Justice, they start to round that corner with the bridge. You can then get all your Ana at that point, who was aim god up on the high ground. And could have been very difficult. There would have been a lot of time left for the Justice potentially after getting checkpoint B. So good hold here for New York. You have some ultimates here and you have high ground, which is almost more important. We'll see what the Justice decide to do to break it. You have this Primal Rage. You can send that up to the high ground. The issue is Primal Rage up on the high ground. You may not get the the ability to use Ark's Rally effectively, but oh, NYXL, they go aggressive, and that'll be Ark using the Rally, getting a kill on the Libro earlier, and everything falls apart. Yeah, I saw that off screen. I mean, Libro gets stunned, discorded by Jonark, and then smacked in the head by Animo. Not much you can do there. And this should pave the way for the Justice here to comfortably get this payload now, just outside of this power plant. Corey, just making it clear that he's noticed that New York noticed him. NYXL obviously want the high ground as it's readily available to them and an easy to access, especially for their Zenyatta. But Corey knows that's where they're going to be and he's planning a bit of a foray, an incursion if you will. Gronach swatted aside by Rory, he's looking for another opportunity just to try and deny Mano any foothold on the high ground, trying to take that territory for Washington and a one for one. But NYXL have lost their main tank here. 
still able to swing back. The damage was there, and Nene is still running wild. He does have a Harmony Orb, and that helps a lot. Har Harmony Orb, and he has some armor packs as well. As the rally wears off, he holds on to some of that armor, but it's also interesting in the last fight at the start, they loaded up the armor packs onto Jonath. A little bit of an adjustment. Make the Zenyatta a little bit stronger. Don't really worry about your tracer. Let Nene just kind of figure that out on his own. And let Jonath weather the storm of the dive of Cory and Roar coming through. So far, not so bad. He's been able to stay out of harm's way. Now, Libero is hanging around in the back line. He's trying to wide flank, but he gets spotted here by, looks like Elibode spy checking, forcing him to translocate out of the fight. And now he's getting pressured down by these two tanks. Corey going down to Neno, though, is going to relieve the pressure on Libero now. Washington have to back away. Libero won't be punished for getting spotted. Two minutes and ten seconds remain for Washington to get point B. Stratus still behind the enemy there, and it seemed like he, he had gotten spotted out by somebody of NYXL because Mono just makes a beeline directly towards his direction. He's still, so obviously somebody had an inkling of where Stratus' last location was. I mean, was. look, Elevote is checking everything. I mean, there's no cost to do this as a diva. You have unlimited ammunition. There's an EMP. He just wants to catch Elevote with this and doesn't worry about Aim God, who consequently gets to EMP. This forces Libero to get out. Nene has to hope this pulse bomb makes an impact. Otherwise, it's one bad ultimate after another. Mano will actually have to use Primal Rage. He gets hit by the pulse bomb of Corey. That's two so ults now. Two. You, you've rotated around here for NYXL. NYXL's actually taken the, the side of the payload as they see the Justice Wrap all the way around towards the backside. It's, look, it gives no opportunity for Stratus yeah. to get an EMP. They have to get the cart going, force the fight back down. That's right. Stratus has to be visible to contest objectives. Sombra can't do it whilst invisible. Not anymore, anyway. So, cart's moving. Aim God's taken down, though. Justice are very split up right now. Their flankers are playing a long way from the core of them, and it's up to Ellie Vote now and Roar to hold down the fort. Ellie Vote's able to find two kills. Mana was out of the picture, but Hotbar is still very healthy, and that's a Discord Orb on Roar. He is uh, out of here. That's where you see the patience and the experience of NYXL pay off, though. As the card starts to move, the Justice want the NYXL to take the fight on the card. results in a, a big EMP, and the Justice keep the card moving. What NYXL does is they know that Stratus has that EMP. They know he's moving it. What do they do? They dive the back line, right? They go all the way to the back of the Justice, and they just kind of juggle the cart, right? One player after another goes on a contest, so the cart actually never moves. And Stratus can't get there. He was busy trying to work the cart. That's a self-destruct. Hotbar looked defensive, but he can't get back, and he's met. Corey takes him down before he can, and now that's only five up for NYXL. Two of them get hit with that. Hack came on to Nene and Mano. Washington couldn't follow up, but there's only 10 seconds left in the round, and something's gonna give now. Nene down, there it is, Aim God once more delivers. What's he looking for? He's solo flanking, Mono's right above him, and can't spot him out. Discord will now thrown on the enemy, Winston and Mono has to get the heck out of trouble. Hotma's on his own on the payload, and here's your overtime. Libero is out of the picture, and he was so close to EMP, and won't have a chance to go for it. Aim God now just waiting, waiting for his chance to transcend it, but it looks like it might not even be needed. He gets another one. Balls to the wall for Aim God. They finally get the cart over the line there. As the Justice still have this transcendence. Corey with the pulse bomb has been great. He's getting those first pickoffs, but like you mentioned, I mean, Aim God has played fantastic here early oh, on. Man, he looks so sick. He, when he was on Boston, it was never really like an issue of like skill, right? I mean, the, the, the guy was nuts. Look, four final blows to Jonax zero, currently. And they, there's no excuse of, oh, you have an Orisa and uh, I don't, because both teams are playing with Winston. He's just playing better. Well, I mean, you do look at it. I mean, Jonax had 4,500 damage to Aim God's 2,700. The thing is, they're just doing a much better job of keeping Aim God alive. Aim God's doing a much better job of moving around the map. And it's got a lot to do with Corey and Stratus capitalizing on that early damage in Discord yeah. place, but that doesn't Yada's able to get. Stratus has been involved in a heck of a lot of these kills. Six final blows for a Sombra, not too shabby. New York now have a moment to breathe at least, man. They pushed them out. And the Justice, you're just kind of regrouping. You still have this Transcendence. You didn't have blowing in the last fight. You could open things up with a Rally. Maybe force the Transcendence out of Jonak and then pop an EMP and continue to push the cart. 12 seconds left in the round. The Justice have the ultimates to break this fight open. It really will come down to execution. You can see Jonak is on the high ground. We'll be trying to stay safe. Note that Hotbar is keeping an eye on him. And if his periphery. Does Stratus go to the higher ground here, or does he wait for NYXL to engage? And, and they know this rally is trying to get them to go down and end up using Stratus their attacks. attendance to fight. 
No EMP opportunity now for Stratus. He needs to wait a little bit and they lose Roar in the meantime. The Justice have no choice but to try and double down here, but that self destruct is going to block the doorway. Great placement. It forces the Transcendence out of Aim God. Now he rejoins the rest of his team. Corey, that Pulse Bomb really had to stick, but instead it went straight into the vacuum. And NYXL, they hold on and they shut the door in the Justice's face. Yeah, Stratus is actually coming back from spawn, trying to get an EMP off as it kind of got, it took a while to develop, right? But they got the support ults out from NYXL. They still held on to the EMP. It just didn't happen fast enough, right? As uh, well, Stratus I mean, has to come all the way off respawn, try and get back. He, yeah, I mean, he, getting hacked there really hurt him. The bomb yes. thrown in. I mean, he, he couldn't just translocate out into the open. He had to break line of sight, and that was in the dying seconds. Still really good push, though, for the Justice. Not a complete uh, map completion, but still, you get very close to doing so just around the last corner, pretty much down the home stretch. You get you get like a two two early fight wins here for the justice. Uh, you get like you dwindle some clock on point A. You're still in a very good position to take this map, go up 2-0 in the series. It has a lot to do with this first point hold. Are justice going to play close? You expect them to with this kind of composition. It is dive. Bit of get in, get out, work right outside of New York spawn. Another win here for the justice. I mean, this series in general would just be huge pickup for them. Two on in a row at home. And, you know, we've talked a lot about like Jonak versus Aim God, right? But when you look at the numbers, right, both with three deaths, Jonak with the better hero damage uh, by a pretty significant margin. It's really that you're losing the tank line of NYXL pretty fast. Yes. You know, Mono at six deaths, Hotbow with five, where Roar and Elevote staying alive much better. Uh, you know, Roar only three deaths there in that first half. Remember, hero pool draws happening again for week six. Today after the games on the Watchpoint post show. That's uh, always a good time, isn't it, Matt? Oh, I had a great time uh, doing the, the hero draw. Excited to see what they draw this week. I'm sure uh, everyone, will, everyone will really love what Sideshow has to do. Is, uh, he only produces the best uh, results. Best always. quality content, yeah. Okay, so the Justice don't actually take an early hold. They don't try and play up on the buildings outside of spawn. Instead, they give the NYXL some, some room. Now, is this wise, Matt? I think they don't want to lose a fight early on, just like how NYXL did, and then it kind of trickled into really no point A defense. Kind they of snowballed out of control. Yeah, they, they want at least a chance to stall the card here at the choke and get a clean fight. So a lower risk approach for the Justice. Will it pay off? Raw! Oh, he's trying to get away, but then they chases him down. Four players involved in that elimination, but the Discord off from Jonak really got them over the line. And it's not exactly like a, uh, a less risky scenario. It's kind of in the same scenario where it's one fight territory, right? I mean, look at where the card's moving. You don't really have a great option to get another fight here on Karada. But you don't believe that defending far forward gives you an extra fight? It, it does, but with the way that the compositions are tailored and there's so much mobility and players are spread out much more, there's way more of an opportunity to trickle and, you know, not have everybody die in one big lump, right? Like. When you think back to uh, even compositions like Bunker or Goats, right? A lot of players are dying in a very short amount of time. All in together. A very, in, at a, at a, all together. Which the this, dying players want. Right. This is not exactly the same type of game where there are players all over the place, uh, players kind of trickling in and out. Yeah, I mean, spatially, they are positioned differently. Yes. And that results in a different kind of uh, you know, staggering a of rhythm. Deaths. Yes, yeah. a rhythm of death. Rhythm of death. How about that? Oh, <laughs> Mano gets hacked, so he can't take the high ground once more. <laughs> Primer Rage, though, he was at least able to get that one out. Angod comes up with the Transcendence. Can he keep Roar alive? No! The Pulse Bomb cuts through, but doesn't care about healing. It's burst damage. Libero tried to go for an EMP, but he gets hacked and Ark runs him down. I tell you what, that is some heads up play from Stratus on the EMP. Once again, denies Libero, but Libero still has his ultimate. That. That is different from last time. I mean, dude, maybe Stratus, so, you know, we kind of talked about it with luck with the Color Hex Blizzard and the map one, he does <laughs> yeah. it again. I mean, maybe it's just insane timing and just a really good, just game sense of when those ultimates are going to come through. Is, but the Justice know when EMP's online, they get aggressive. They go right to the back line. This will be another fight where it'll be pretty risky for NYXL to invest in EMP with Jonak down already. Yeah, and that's great for Stratus. This time, I mean, he, he didn't have EMP. He, I'm sure he was worried about NYXL getting a defensive transcendence. Jonak gets taken down before he has the chance to Ooh. use it. Lose Corey here, though, off to the side in a Tracer 1v1. 
Robinson. That's the EMP to follow up now. The Justice might be punished here for overextending a little bit. The Discord Orb helps Stratus against Libero, but Libero finds the final block. And you only lose Stratus. This will allow the tanks and the supports to back around the corner. Corey will be up as well, so you will be able to contest the cart again with all six players available, but that's what I kind of talked about, like staggering deaths, right? Corey dies on one side, right? Then an EMP comes out, you lose Stratus. Like, it, it just trickles. It's not a big, like, kind of lump reset type Well, it means game. you don't have six players already at the same time. It hurts teams a lot. Aim got down. There's any others. I tell you what, they are copying a beating on either side of the map. And Ark is missing too, which means the Justice have no heals. How does this change their style? Probably doesn't, in fact. With Raw now going down to Nene, all that Elevote can do is try and stall this out, and he's done well considering he's in a 1v4. Another Transcendence or the Jonark. He's held onto it. And this is, it's going to be used reactively here if the Justice try and get a fight. 2.26 meters, Matt. Yeah, you recontest here if you're the Justice. You have your main tank, Transcendence from both sides. You can extend this fight. Pulse Bob, even in the Transcendence, it doesn't matter. Nene gets the kill on Ark, and that is crucial. Mano lands on Stratus. And that was big as well. He would have had an EMP if that fight had gone any longer. The NYXL, it looked like an even fight, but when it came to the execution, when it came to the crutch, if you will, it was all NY. Is there for the justice? I mean, they just kind of throw bodies at the point. If they get a, an early pick, it's probably something you invest in. But they, have a, they have a legitimate in. fight opportunity. They I mean, had like, six yeah. players. They, they had the uh, Transcendence committed. The Transcendence pop from both sides right at the start. Both Tracers invest Pulse Bombs into it. But one trace, only one trace, he gets the kill. It was Ark that went down. Oh, really? Or Lean P? You're actually Ooh, I gonna think... get just both tanks here. Libero wasn't ready for that at all either. I mean, I don't blame him. What did the Justice do with this, though? They might have to back out. They, they do. I mean, there's nothing really they can get out of that. That'll oh. be self-destruct as well. That's an awkward with engagement. With an EMP for New York. Raw this time, though. He got EMP'd, as did Ark. Both of them get taken out of Mano. They can't do a darn thing about the Primal Rage inside that small alcove. And so Mano has a fantastic fight, super high value use of that ultimate, and still with 2 minutes 47 on the clock to NYXL are close. They're almost there, Matt. So you have a self-destruct here up in the sky for Elivo. That'll get blown up on the car. Can Roar get in touch? You have a, a rally going here as well for the Justice. Yeah, the Justice has been Primal a bit of extra rage. durability. They need to get to the cart, though. Roar had that Primal Rage, but he got hacked up, and Jonah gets a Discord kill on him. Corey Pulse Bomb, Hail Mary, straight into the defense matrix, and there it is, New York. They're having to weather this renewed aggression from Washington and even up the series. Pretty solid stuff all the way through their attacking side and Washington met a couple of gaps when it came to their chance to start the fight. And much better play from New York there in map number two. Kind of get the meta under your wing there, map number one, kind of get used to the speed of play, the pace of play, what Washington wanted to come and do in here today. Really excited to see what happens if both of these teams go in at halftime and make some adjustments. Nene's looking comfortable on that Tracer too. Let's head back to LA and hear from our experts as we head to our game break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's first and only nationwide 5G network. And by State Farm for auto, home, or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Washington Justices are doing their best to pull up back-to-back -back wins in front of their home crowd. But New York Excelsior have something to say about that. Welcome back to our Watchpoint Game Break presented by Pringles Wavy. My name is Zoe and I'm joined by Saicho as well as Costa. Now Justice taking that control map, not the first time we've seen that happening uh, when, you know, one team is heavily favored and yeah. the other one is running away with the control map and then loses the entire thing. Uh, is that something you expect to happen here as well or do you think Justice can legitimately put up a fight in the coming maps as well? I mean, I, I think that they did put up a fight on Dorado as well and, and when they have an opportunity in the maps to run this bunker kind of setup, it seems like New York are genuinely having a bit of a problem there. So I think this this map is, or this match rather, is going to be a lot more even than we originally thought because I was expecting New York to come in with this dive, remember how good they were in 2018 and just wipe the floor with Washington. Yeah, and I think you just sort of saw Washington put up more of a fight just across the board. I think Stratus and uh, Corey did a really good job in this first map of stepping up to Sibyobi and Libero. But on top of that, I think Aimgod did an incredible job of, you know, almost going ahead of Jonak. He was getting a lot of frags, playing super aggressive, and I think it sort of caught New York, New York Excelsior off guard a little bit. Yeah, I think the real reason that Washington, though, were able to come away with that first map was because they were able to put together this Torbjorn yeah. and May setup that got them up to 99% when it came to Village. And if they can find opportunities on the maps to play that, that's where they can generate some kind of advantage. You can't really play that on Dorado. You can't get the... There's not enough... And clong confined spaces on the map, like yeah. enclosed areas to be able to force the enemy team to dive into you. They tried to play a little bit of it, but eventually it went back to the dive v dive. And on the dive v dive, New York have just been edging it out, especially with Nene in the lineup. It yeah. is great to see though that Justice do have such kind of niche picks, niche stretch for specific places in maps Definitely. or for specific maps, something we saw a lot from Atlanta as well. So this is uh, boding well for Washington Justice. Yeah, I, I think you saw on this uh, second map for on Dorado, NYXL, the way Nene was playing the Tracer, I think was a lot harder for Washington to deal with. I think when you had Sabiolbi in the lineup, it was a lot of Corey chasing Sabiolbi and them sort of dictating the tempo. Nene was just chasing Corey. It felt like <laughs> that entire map on Dorado. He's playing super aggressive and it sort of messed with New York's style. Obviously, Dorado was very different to control in terms of the fact that it's like you have to butt heads. They, I feel like New York, when they have more space to play with and more ability to control the map, they, they looked a lot stronger. So speaking of that Tracer matchup, we were excited to see Sebiolbi going up against Corey. Yep. Actually, not so much of that. Uh, second map, Sebiolbi was... Uh, like put back on the bench and Nene was uh, swapped back in. What did you think of that Nene Corey, Nene Corey matchup? I agree with Custer. I think that Nene ended up playing it better. And Sebi Obi, you can see, is trying to take the head-to-head -head against Corey. But a lot of the time, Sebi Obi plays tight with his team. And he that's always been his playstyle is to take a Harmony Orb, sit with his back line, and try and fend off the enemy tracer. Nene, though, was taking aggressive positions, taking Brig armor packs, which is how you're supposed to play with a Zen and Brigitte back line. You can play much more aggressive. You have 200 base HP as soon as the Brigitte armor is on you. You're supposed to play aggro. And Nene just gave Corey no respect whatsoever, got right up in his face and was winning the Tracer matchups. And we're seeing that's how Tracer's been played in this meta. Like, you... I didn't really expect to see Zen Brig coming into this meta with the Tracer. It's kind of funny. Brig Weird, was isn't it? brought in to shut down Tracer, but now it's like you have to play Brig with Tracer. Because yeah. it creates this armor. As you said, we're going back... It's almost like we're going back four years ago when we played... Uh, uh, Symmetry used to give 50 health to the <laughs> Tracers and you'd put yeah. the Zen Orb on him. It's literally going back to that yeah. in that style. And you're seeing these Juggernaut of Tracers and I think the aggressive style is definitely the way to play compared to the sort of sneaky passive like we've seen in the past. I do love that we can draw those comparisons uh, though from like back in the days, but the heroes have changed, right? There are so many changes to how much damage they do, how much armor they provide, etc. So there's a complete new dynamic now which mm. makes it very exciting. It's not as stale or as obvious as it used to be. Now, it is time how However, to talk about crunch time presented by Pringles Wavy. Whew, that was a hard one to get out there. Uh, guys, what you got for us? Well, this one is just, it's a bit of a, you hate to see it as well, honestly. <laughs> hey, no, hey, stop Best that. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Look at these dueling EMPs, and this is really what decides half of map one as well. 99% for the Washington Justice. New York are looking in a great position to be able to turn it if Libero gets in position with his EMP. But they just both go for it at the exact same time. Both have the great read of when to go for it. And, and it's one of those plays where you just can't really predict that your EMP is going to get cancelled by the opposing EMP. You can't blame Libero for that at that point. No. He was in a perfect position. He was probably going to hit four, maybe five with yeah. that EMP. It was the right timing. It's just two great minds thinking of, like, going for the EMP. Unfortunately, Strat is just that fraction of a second faster. And the, the way the Sombra, like, EMPs interact, there is a short cast time with the EMP, like... 
yeah. 0.3 of a second. So gets hit in that window, unfortunately it gets owned. And that really decided map uh, the first round and potentially the map because that second round as well was very close on Village. So Nepal, they were both going head to head, toe to toe with each other. And just that EMP pushes them over the edge on round one. Now, if we're looking ahead to the second half, I believe the next map should be King's Row, although it is. the prompt I... does say Eichenwalde, and I'm not trusting it. <laughs> <laughs> King's Row, though, uh, what do you expect? Do you think we are seeing Nene swapping back uh, with Sibyolbi again? Do you expect any changes from New York? I think you can play more bunker. If you wanted yeah. to try and do it, if you want to run the May Torb, something like that, you can try and get value out of these kind of brawly compositions with a Batiste in the lineup as well. Uh, I'm not sure whether Washington are going to go for it, but it means that they have more strategic options. And it seems like at the moment, New York are just dive, dive, dive. They're easier to read, even if their players are incredibly, incredibly good. Uh, Kings Row is a very linear map, so it's historically been very hard to play dive because you, you can't really get great flanks. There are corridors, but they're very narrow and very hard, it, very easy to be seen. So I would say you would ex I would expect more, you know, Tor, May from the Washington Justice. It is still, a very, as I said, very narrow things. We're probably going to see May, unfortunately, to us all. <laughs> probably, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, both those teams have uh, been uh, showing a lot of versatility, so let's see what they will be coming up for King's Row. So we're heading back over to DC and stick around afterwards for Watchpoint Reset. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. Welcome back, everybody, to Washington Time to talk about something important. Today is International Women's Day, and the Overwatch League is proud to celebrate all of the hardworking, talented women who are behind the scenes. And, of course, in front here in the venues, bringing you all the action each week from our outstanding production and events team to the league and the team back offices. Women have had a hand in every part of the Overwatch League, and we can't think of too many harder working people in all of eSports then Anlin Dang, otherwise known as Ballin, who is the GM of the Washington Justice. She is down on the floor now with Jake, and we're excited to hear from her. Thank you so much, Mitch. I'm down here on the floor with Annalyn Dang, General Manager of the Washington Justice. And the crowd is so supportive. I want to ask Annalyn, 
Tell me, how'd you get your start in gaming in general? So I got my start in gaming when I was playing with my friends and family when I was younger. And I'm extremely competitive, so seeing my growth and how I've moved up while playing games felt really, really productive to me and it's really rewarding. I know exactly what you mean, that feeling that you're really progressing. Um, why though, specifically, why did you gravitate to Overwatch in the Overwatch League? Um, I really love Overwatch because it's actually such a team-based game and I value the communication so much. But more than that, I think that, especially with the character design, I really love the representation. And because of the representation, I think it created such an inclusive community. You see all of these amazing fans behind me here. Um, they're so incredible. And you see people of all ages. And I just, I love it. I couldn't agree more. Now, on a more general note, I want to ask you, do you have a message that you'd like to share on this International Women's Day to other women interested in gaming and esports? Um, don't let other people tell you that you don't belong here. We see so many people that work hard behind the scenes, and you all deserve to have a place here. <laughs> what a lovely message here on International Women's Day. Thanks so much for joining us down on the floor here with Annalyn Dang, and I'll send it back to you, Mitch and Matt. Thank you very much, Jake, and of course, thank you, Annalyn. It's fantastic to have you part of the league, and one of many wonderful women that really the reason this show is here. And look, she's been able to turn the Justice around, right? I know she comes over from the Gladiators, now the GM here of the Justice. They've made some changes to the team. Uh, they have some of the best player treatment uh, in the league, and it just shows like what the one person, a really bright individual, can do for a franchise. It's the vibe that sort of permeates the entire roster. Let's see, Matt, if it's uh, going to be enough to get them over the line here as we head into our third map of the series. It'll be King's Road. It's all tied up after half time. The Justice came out strong early on. And yes, if we end up coming back around to a control map at the end of the series, that may serve them well. But they need to get through this one and assault after. I think the two things that will be interesting to look at after halftime is does New York find that just inserting Nene is the answer here? Hey, play just a little bit more of an aggressive tracer player. You can then move him over to some other heroes if you would like. And then for the Justice, what adjustments to their play do they make coming out of the half? Well, in composition, obviously no adjustments here really for them. The same can be said of, the, of Washington. And they will do with Corey. Something's going to give here on this flank. One of these players is going to push through. Notice that Corey's been given that harmony orb and still is struggling a bit. Jonak stuck with the Discord. Uh, I agree though with what Sideshow was talking about at halftime is that Putting in Nene, it puts more pressure on Corey. Corey can't just go and go on these flanks and kind of go just uncontested. And the fact that Savio B will kind of just track him once he comes to his side of the map. Like Nene is going to put pressure Corey will on come the, for, yeah. yeah, Nene is going to put pressure on the the just back line, and then he's also going to come directly at you. That also opens up the opportunity for Jonak to put down some more damage, make it even a little bit scarier. Nene extremely proactive when it comes to taking ground, and look at that. Libero is able to get rid of Corey. Just a little bit too much pressure for one player to deal with. The Discord Orb again was there from Jonak. With the Tracer down, the NYXL get to stop looking over their shoulder and they get to look forward. They bowl arc over, Pulse Bomb there, and look at this, NYXL. They owned this meta back in 2018. That dive was all about them. It looks like they're starting to rediscover the essence of that. And it's... It's obviously something that they've done in the past, but it's a much different lineup, right? You know, Hoppa in play, Nene, Libero, like uh, Libero is still in play, uh, you know, back then, but really just Nene and Hoppa, and it's two big adjustments, right? You know, when you talk about dive, the coordination between your tanks, uh, what, the Winston and the Diva, the Tracer player as well, it's some of the most important kind of consistency that you can get amongst players. That'll be Aim God who connects with a headshot on an enemy and kick things off, but that's going to be an EMP in response. Yeah, just when it looked like the NYX, so we're going to keep rolling through. The Justice are able to stand up. Aim God getting the transcenders there was huge. But they've had to use it, which means NYX so will have the advantage in ultimates. The EMP for Stratus. I mean, it's so nasty, Matt, getting hit with an EMP when you're ready to unload those ultimates. You never have the chance to. Let's see if Stratus can actually be the proactive one. Here. Well, well, you see, he had to play pretty far up to try and farm the last bit to get EMP because he doesn't allow them to walk through the show here for free. self strike does force the back line of Washington to, to cower inside the pub. Jonah probably being very aware. Yep, he's going to go for the transcendence now. 
just in case that EMP dropped in, but Jonak was hiding at just the right time. Great intuition from Jonak. But still, Mano gets taken down. Yeah, as Mano kind of got stuck inside the library, and they were trying to find an angle to get him the healing. They just weren't able to do so. As the Justice, they pushed pretty far in. Jonak's going to be able to take out Corey. That's a lot of pressure off of him now. He's going to be able to push forward with the rest of the team, clean up these kills. Matt, another situation where Washington try and start the fight. They initiate with an EMP. But the NYXL, they're so well drilled in how to respond. Disengage away from that damage and then make the most of Jonak's transcendence. He hit away from the EMP to be able to use. Yeah, and Jonak's getting a lot of work done here in the first half. The 25% of the team's damage about. And being able to just pump out so much damage from the back line. It's, it's just been a little bit of a difference. And now Corey wins the 1v1 against Nate. Let's see so what how they decide the to... Result? Well, let's see how they decide to play this, right? Does Corey and them try and go right into the back line? That'll be they a big fight. EMP. They wanted Water to come forward. Washington knew they had an advantage. They tried to EMP Raw, but they saved him. Aim God, another Transcendence. Aim God has a huge amount of Transcendence healing right now. Over a thousand, as opposed to Jonak's 400. Again, you see it works out. The NYXL lose a play. They say, I bet you Washington try and engage off these with their dive. They thought they caught Raw, but they were wrong. And they try and EMP and then follow it up with the self-destruct as New York's been using like EMP self-destruct a lot in a lot of fights and then also they've been using the self-destruct to split players off and then allow Mono to go in and try and you know, get a kill onto the back line, maybe the Zenyatta, so it's worked a few times. The last like two or three though, we haven't really seen it pay off with big results. I mean, you really want to keep an eye on how Stratus uses his EMP. Again, it's just to catch the aggressors from the NYXL, but are Washington going to follow up? No. They once again use EMP to try and stave off this NYXL aggression. So New York just gets an opportunity to regroup and go again, Matt. Oh, that's so smart there from Libero. He gets a hack on the arc, so he couldn't use the rally or an armor pack. And then he immediately turns and takes out Aim God. This is going to be a close fight now. Corey has to recall. Raw has the Primal Rage. Mano's already used his. Corey can't push through with a Diva in his way. He has to go through that main entrance. And who is Raw looking for? Just to cause some chaos and return to his team. It gives enough time for Stratus to work Mano down. It all kind of falls apart there for New York because it was looking good, right? They had the Transcendence. They were pushing on forward. They got a kill on Aim God. And then Ark, though, still with that rally, right? Gives the armor to everybody. They push up. They're able to turn the tides of that fight. As you know, Minute 18, still a lot of time for NYXL, though, to get this second checkpoint. Okay, two Pulse Bombs up in this fight. Then they're there, losing the armor. He was given for the repair pack. It does not persist. A lot of orbs. Then they see the Discord of Winston. Tries to go in on it. Burns double blink to get there. And has a pulse form if he needs it. The Justice are playing safe right now and they're trying to play out of line of sight. They're split on either side. Pulse bomb. No. Looks like Aim God can escape from that one. Ah, oh, good stun to stop Nene from getting rid of the Zenyatta. The roar goes down still. That's the EMP. Six players from NYXL get EMP'd. But again, the Justice. There's no follow-up after a big EMP. Stratos gets the initiation, but where's the extra damage? I mean, you're down your main tank and your D.Va doesn't have the mech, so you lose both of those tanks on the car. And you're not able to do anything after that. Oppa just trying to push the mech over the edge, but he didn't really need it there. The Justice again. You think they go for that fight after the EMP, but they were already lacking too many resources, and New York just squeak in here to the foundry, the final stage of the map with a minute and 45 on the docket. So now with New York getting the car, around first corner, potentially around the second corner as well. It's just as kind of regrouping. You'll have both support ults for NYXL and a Primal Rage to potentially put it away with one more fight. The Justice probably look a little bit frazzled now. Frustrated that both of the EMP milestones have not been accompanied by team fight wins. Usually they are. Ellie Boat Raw low. Raw's got the Discord right now. Aimgod has to go for the Transcendence. So now the Justice they don't push that far forward. Again, they still play safe. They just keep the payload contested. Jonarko will have a transcendence later in the fight. He's been saving it for now. That's an EMP. Elevo stunned. He's out of mech. Mech destroyed now on the pulse bomb thrown in the middle. Still just the one kill onto the Justice. But Mano and Hotbar are nice and healthy. And Jonark goes for the transcendence now. And that seems to be the green light for the NYXL to kick it up a notch. They force Aim God back inside spawn. Corey stunned up there. And great finish off by Nene. Look pretty clinical at the end of the round there for New York, Matt. As they start that last fight with Animo using Rally, that gets Jonak up to about 300 HP. And when, when you have the cart that close to the objective and you can't put any pressure on him and he has that much health and he's sitting back just letting those orbs fly, 
it's just a matter of time that you're going to crumble. Yeah, Dronark looks frightening when he's got all that extra defensive stats. We'll be back. There's still much more to be told here from King's Road. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Start of this match, the Washington Justice, they came out of the gates with this otherworldly kind of energy, Matt. Completely stunning NYXL in map one. That seems to have dissipated a little bit now. They look reluctant to start these fights, especially when, you know, we're seeing big EMPs from Stratus. He is setting opportunities up, but it seems as if the Justice are not ready to follow him in. And it's kind of what New York's done to teams over time. Like, New York, they've never really kind of been like a an explosive kind of team that comes That's in true. like three o's you like a san francisco or a vancouver titans they they're, almost you like down. A, they're almost like i was just gonna say they're almost like a ufc fighter who kind of grapples a ton and just gets you on the ground and just wears you out right they're not gonna get like flashy knockouts but like you have to be perfect to beat them right over time they just work you down work you down punish work those you down. mistakes punish, punish position mistakes, errors punish position and it's really unforgiving because for the justice you probably feel like you're playing like to your best strengths you're you're getting there right you're getting the situations you want it's just new york always has an answer washington justice now a couple haymakers wouldn't go all right here on the attack they want to blow through new york on point a they're out of the gates here tracer and sombra now they on the soldier 76 here matthew I mean, now look, on the defensive end, Soldier can control the high ground. It gives you another person to protect Jonah. He's self-sufficient. He's in damage, self-sufficient, doesn't need a lot of resources being put into him. Speed and mobility to ro rotate through the high ground and the different windows. Just creating another issue for the tanks to deal with of the Washington Justice, right? You can't just play on the ground, and also you can't send Corey into a group of three players. Have a look at the uh, the scoreboard up the top, the characters where the Discord orb is being placed. That'll give you a hint as to where the Justice is trying to go next. Ark is getting a lot of Discord action from Jonah. Corey is flanked all the way around. No one really focusing him down right now, and he's not over committing to try and get these kills. He understands that Jonah is a little bit out of range. Libra might try and capitalize, though. That is a beautiful hack, and there was no chance to recall. And that's what New York wants. They want this spread out play. As Mono was inside the hotel, he gets a little bit low. Hoffa jumps down, and what happens? Corey just lingers for a little bit longer than he probably would have liked to in the archway. Libero gets he, the hack, they jump down, and they take him He out. tried to hit Libero and to interrupt the hack animation, obviously. Sombro's yeah. hack gets interrupted by any damage, but Tracer's spread is so considerable that at that kind of range, he couldn't even hit Libero to interrupt. Now War can't exactly stand on the point. What about now? 76 on the high ground. To the high ground with the Nana Boost and immediately Hotfire is there to defend his teammates. <laughs> Manu trying to loop away there from Raw, but Stratus caught him at the other end. Corey stunned up. Oh, he needs the Mega. He got it. He was actually being healed by Aim God. You saw the darts come through the doorway and the Justice are on the same page now. And it shows. And you don't know how that fight would have went if Aim God doesn't hit a big biotic grenade, connects it mono, denies him some healing in there. 
He was being chased by the tanks, so most likely, you know, 10% of a to a primal rage with Winston's Tesla cannon that hits multiple targets once is nothing, nothing in terms of time. So probably wouldn't have been able to get a primal rage there. Extended EMP, tack visor could have been much different there. Yeah. Big goodbye out of grenade is, from Oh, him. I love this flank. Oh, aim guard, no protection for him. Then he drops in with a tactical visor. And we're looking for a little bit more now. Ark is not going to get away. And quick as you like, the NYXL strike hard. Three kills from a flank. Nice burst of aggression from an otherwise more defensive lineup and roster. You know, it's very interesting that you see more Soldier 76 this weekend than I think anyone would have expected. I think a lot of people were talking like, oh, maybe we see Hanzo in play, right? Hanzo, a good damage, right? Very consistent damage. But really, it's just the you don't have to put any resources into 76, and the mo extra mobility is massive. The MP from Stratus there, he wanted to go first. He got three, but again, he did not connect with Jonak. This is fundamental stuff that we saw from a triple DPS meta when Sombra featured heavily. You need to get the Zenyatta with that ultimate. And God down, Hopper just Hail Mary's a bomb in there, and without Yana, the Justice have to rely on the healing from Ark's Rally. That isn't going to last them long enough. It's not going to cover enough of the fight. Mano goes in, he was low on health. He's able to back out though. The Justice with one less player. Can they avoid the bomb from Ellie Vote? Yes. Discord Orb here, placed back on Raw. The NYXL once again re emerge out onto the battlefield, and Corey is dashed aside. And that time they were able to get a kills and they were able to make progress using the self destruct and Mono's primal rage. This will be attack visor here. They're just trying to push up, maybe get anything with it. And maybe get players off spawn. This will be a nano boost in response on the roar as you're trying to take this fight back for the justice. Great discipline from Nene though, Matt. He did not push past the corner even though he had tactical visor on. He knew that could have cost him. I, the justice tried to punish that burst of aggression from New York, but NYXL didn't give them enough And it's an odd trade, but you'll trade if you're New York. Tack yes. visor for nano boost. Every time. Aim God's gonna go over to Zen now. Look what Roar did with the nano boost in that first fight, Matt. Plus Aim God's biotic grenade. Great trade for New York. Two minutes and 17 seconds on the clock for the Justice. Elevote wearing the Discord currently. Straight on into the hoop and haunch, and he is gonna force back the somber presence of Libero, who's close to an EMP himself. He and Strata staying neck and neck in that count. Raw. Nice timing there from Elevote to keep him alive. He gets healed up rather quick. Biotic Grenade gives you that source of uh, burst healing, but our aim goes on the Zenyatta. That's the EMP. Is their follow up? Nene has a high ground position, and yep, no shielding available for Washington. They had to run away again. We have some kills here, though, going on for the Justice. His Animo has been pushed pretty far in. Dangerous. He's, that good defense matrix there from Hotpa, though, just keeping him alive even a little bit longer. Yeah, the fact that it took Corey to come through there is going to make a difference. Hotpa, great awareness of his Brigitte, who, in fairness, it looked like Animo overextended slightly inside the pub there. Look Look a face full of damage he didn't otherwise expect. Corey's still pushing. Mono jumps in, perfect bubble, keeps Hotba alive as he's got a self-destruct. Little, little tactical time out here. Tactical. It's very tactical. We actually have my, had had much yeah. worse ones. There was a team jumping down from the Icon uh, Bowl building and then we paused. So Yeah, let's see. It looks like uh, an issue is somebody on New York back there. So just kind of check and see what's going on. Looks like all the way at the end. It looks like it's an uh, issue with Nene, so. Well, I'll find out what's going on with that. Get it checked out. But it uh, looked like New York was actually going to make a last-ditch effort to try and hold there before point B. Yeah, just as we're just outside of that checkpoint. Let's talk a little bit about the scrap that we've seen so far, Matt. Um, there's been a lot of the, the focus on the bricks here. Uh, we, we saw that Animo had to be, you know, got out of jail there by, um, by Hotbar. How do the Justice look now coming through this second stage? It's scrappy fighting. Yeah, I mean, they, they've looked better in the second stage of the map. I think for me, one of the big differences that we see on defense is the 76 play of Nene. With so much high ground and just area to move around, like being able to utilize like the sprint and just change location all the time makes it very difficult, right? Because now you're not only locating like, where is the enemy Sombra, you're also trying to track down where is the enemy 76. Is he playing, uh, you know, up on the high ground to the left? Is he all the way in the back corner? Is he with the tanks on the low ground? And then when I dive him, does he just rotate all the way out? Does that leave my back line, uh, you know, open for Sombra to make a play? Where I think 76, like, you can just pop out from so many different angles. Like, you can get so fast, like, especially on King's Row, from, like, a flank back to the cart, especially when you get closer. Uh, Let's have a look at uh, the point here. one of those pieces from Nene here. The Soldier 76 on King's Row is just something we don't really see very often. It seems like it's a 
like a more defensive inclination. I mean, I see he gets the high ground, but you don't always have high ground on this map. Let's see, this is that aggressive push that you don't always expect from a team like New York. No, the Justice actually pushed about halfway through the choke here, and you drop down, you use the visor, and then also the choke is just a great setup for EMP, right? The EMP connects with three players here. You're able to get a fight win rather convincingly, quickly, and also at that choke where you want to get fight wins. There's always the assumption as well that you know, it will be an individual often pushing a cart through that choke while your front line is trying to engage. It's often Zenyatta because he can hang around. He sticks a Harmony Orb on his tanks and says, good luck, mate. And in that situation, they're playing Ana, right? Ana is not going to be up with the rest of the team and Brigitte back on the cart. It's going to be the Ana who can heal from range on the cart. So you drop down, you get that pick off of the aim, aim god pretty quick. Now, of course, uh, CNNA here just trying to resolve a couple of issues. We're going to take a very short break, very short. We're going to have a recap of how the games went down last week. Just a reminder. Finally, Overwatch has come home to Houston. Give it up for your Houston Outlaws! Did I oh, Sato! Carnage in the tunnel! Aping is just absolutely destroying. He says, uh -uh, I'm not losing right now. We're not getting stopped here. We're going to retire your jersey and solidify you as a family member of this organization forever. And it feels like the walls are closing in all around you. And they climb forward into victory. Welcome to the war. That is disgusting. I see it. There was all action in Houston last weekend. This weekend has been <laughs> it's been a delight. We had some pretty yeah. scrappy games yesterday and an unexpected result to kick us off today. We already had a map five. This one here has all the hallmarks of a game that can go the distance. I think a lot of people with Hero Pools, obviously, it's such a drastic change. Uh, we didn't really know what to expect, uh, right? Coming into it, uh, especially after we saw the heroes that were drawn, it's like it's kind of jarring. Like, oh, oh what? We're going to lose Reinhardt McCree. Widowmaker, Moira, like for a whole weekend. But yep. I think it's uh, really spawned a lot of good creativity, a lot of fun. We've seen teams adapt. We've seen players be able to go back to heroes and bring them back, which we haven't seen them play in a very long time. So I think overall, this first weekend, it's been a big positive. Ah, it's forced creativity and adapt adaptation. You really don't have any choice if you're so many yeah. of these teams. You have to come up with something. And we have seen different takes that I guess the fruits of the labor of multiple different coaching staffs. So we will be getting back in a game here shortly as no, we in. the pause will end. And then no, the they, game will they, pause. They just had to repause this. So then I just checking something. Yep. So it seems like, look, thumbs up. Seems like everybody's good. But the Justice very close. So to remind me where we are, we are right outside of checkpoint B. Uh, the Justice very close to being able to take this. They have a minute and 17 in their bank. New York, Mono just came in. Drop the, uh, a bubble to keep Hotba alive. So when we open this up, you're going to see both tanks from New York get right back onto the cart. Fight is on. Raw gets him into Discord, and Stratus wants to shut this defense down before it can start with a big EMP, but then must be follow up from Washington. Oh no! <laughs> they lose Aim God. That's not a great start. New York might have a chance now just to really set their feet in this fight. Mano's looking for the back line. He's forcing the translocator, but he's chasing Stratus everywhere. No opportunity to use that EMP. Stratus now has to hold onto it. Goes for a manual hack, and Washington have to reset. 45 seconds on the clock. Yeah, Aim God was the closest support for the Justice to the payload at that time. So if you're wondering why Ark didn't pop that rally sooner, he was still coming back off the respawn. So 36 seconds left. You have an EMP, and you have Transcendence. You're still in a really good spot to win this fight if you're Washington. Not sure if Stratus knows where Libero is or not, but both Sombras are in relatively similar positions. Nene gets the Orb of Harmony. Gonna be tiny going, but he gets hit with a hack there. Neno cannot blink right now. Palo getting close. Mano steps up. New York be that perfectly. Yeah, and Mano gets protected by that uh, d defense matrix as he tries to move up. He is the Transcendence now. Jonak has one of his own, but if he waits a little while, his team will have it for longer. Arcs hit with a Discord. And there it is, he goes down. Nene is able to burn him through as soon as the Transcendence expires. New York had a second, maybe a second and a half of extra healing and aim god gets absolutely rolled. Jonak has to return to the payload though because Roar is doing work. Hotba is down. But again, the Zenyatta makes his mark and New York stand tall. What a defense! 
and they'll be pleased now to set up a match point after the conclusion of King's Road. And Nene has made a huge difference here. After mountain number one, he comes in for Sabio B, and just his aggressive nature of play, whether it be on the Tracer or the 76, has really changed the course of this series. Oh, it is a different look for New York, and looks solid and stable, and they're looking down the barrel of a potential 3-1. The Justice had to fire back after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's first and only nationwide 5G network. the justice they are looking to exit this homestand with an unbesmirched record but they have to go up against new york on day two and they have been put to the test these last couple of maps yeah it's really been since the addition of nene in the lineup for new york that they've really taken control of this series uh, a lot like the justice uh, they they lose the first map yesterday and then they barrel back and they win three straight against boston it's looking like the adjustments that new york has made is pushing them propelling them in that in that space, right? That's where we could be heading. And I think uh, as we move over to Horizon, which will be the next map, I think it definitely throws you for a loop if you're the Justice, because what do you expect New York to run? Like, they've now shown you a little bit of a different look, right? More verticality on the map. We're going to play tra uh, the 76 instead of the Tracer, and they had another difficult time dealing with it. And look, I mean, you see that New York are doing very well dealing with Stratus of Sombra. I mean, Stratus of Sombra got to do a heck of a lot yesterday. He got to walk straight up to people and just EMP. Drenarch is very, very hard to connect the EMP with. He's always getting transcendence. And don't forget, Aim God was Boston Uprising's like support player when Boston themselves were so good at yes. using Sombra and playing against it. So both Zenyatta players are really experienced at dealing with this kind of scrutiny, which creates an interesting game. It is Washington's ability, or lack thereof in some of these cases, to follow up on, on big EMPs that they're getting. They're struggling to be in position when they need to be, Matt, and it is manifesting on the scoreboard. I mean, a few times where they've used the EMP, like you mentioned, not been able to follow up. Players a little bit too far out of range, but still, they know how it's, if we, if we talk like, how, you know, it's really tough for the Justice right now. It's like an all doom and gloom. But you're one map away from sending it to a game five of control, where if Corey starts to pop off again, you could easily walk away from I mean, this series. That's the win condition, right? Get the victory here, and you've got to feel awesome about going back to a control map. And it would be a huge win in terms of the Justice's overall season. I know it's really early, but if you can get to 500 here, 3-3, three and three, 
and then you're like one game away, like behind New York in a, in a way. I mean, you would yeah. you would take that after six games, and right? And you've been duking it out with them, some of the best teams in your division. Yeah, right. Coming out with wins there, sets you up for the rest of the season. Of course, in a world without our McCree and Widowmaker. Well, I think that's why a lot of us, uh, you know, when we're asked on power rankings or doing the power rankings, looking at the power rankings on the desk, we all kind of thought that justice should be a little bit higher. And the fact that they, they have played teams tough. Don't worry, Johnny will never underrate the justice on his power rankings ever again. <laughs> Last time it didn't go well for him. Jonak, what's he doing there? All right. The Jonak rig is... Uh, yeah, that, that's a... That's it's a thonker. Yeah, okay, it's gonna go. be Arnhem. Oh, what? No way! <laughs> Come on! Why he just switches? No, uh, my God! All right, all right. Cut away from this. Let's see a replay of that. I mean, uh, they're gonna they're gonna move up here. That is a crazy sleep. He made it Jonah. look like that was why he switched. Oh, that is filthy stuff. Well, the Justice will at least... Oh, my God. They will have to try to rejoin them here, but NYXL gets to move through a lot of this no man's land without getting harassed. Aim got down now as well. The, uh, the Justice mental is absolutely boomed right now. They need to recover. Well, well, that's the thing, right? Stratus is back, but it's just a little bit of a warning shot. It's a, <laughs> it's a big wake-up call. As Roar up on the, up the high ground. He's asleep as well. There's you may get this point for New York for absolutely nothing. Corey, how is he alive though? He's sitting in the back line. He gets halted down to the low ground. And he's having to get back to the healing of the rest of his team. Libero though, the May on point. Elevo gets frozen, then slept, then desuited, then RKO'd back to spawn. Jonak in the corner though, it's not safe for him. He is hoping to get himself a nano boost before he drops, but that did not work out. It don't matter though, the front line is standing here for the NYXL and oh, just the Stratus touches point. He wasn't visible, so he can't contest it. Uh, I mean, even if he does contest it, nothing good is going to happen. So, it'll be Washington having to try and defend this for five minutes. New York playing a different brand here. This is why I think New York could be so dangerous this year, right? We can see them switch it up, play that aggressive style that we haven't really seen them play a lot in the past, right? More reactive. And then they can bring this look out, right? Where you can play around the May, the Reaper, the Orisa a little bit slower. Just manufacture fight wins. Annoying for Stratus. He got hit by that uh, biotic grenade and had to play out of line of sight. Okay, he gets the hack on Mano now. Washington can drop down. Great May Wall to disengage, though. Mano was honestly dead to rights if that doesn't come up. And again! Another sleep down on Stratus. He's able to translocate out, but it's only back to spawn. Jonah caught in the side room and Raw's able to punish this aggression from New York with a primal rage in close quarters. And finally, the Justice get a chance to collect themselves. You know, they're trying to get this EMP out. Is that a, a, a good hack there from Stratus to not just kind of jump down, pop the EMP? Because at that moment you had it out, you were free for New York to just drop the sound barrier. You maybe get a nano boost onto the Reaper, and you could have pushed on through. Lots of ultimates for both teams here going to be available. Everything pretty much on both sides outside of Roar's Primal Rage. Animo with a sound barrier. This could be a wild one. Yeah, I mean, you look at him, he's checking corners even with his right click to make sure that he's not caught unawares. Maybe he sends his team out with a sound barrier speed boost combo. Nene teleporting forward, they want to try and start the fight. Look at them trying to dig the backliners out from under the point. Ark is still able to get that rally in. Mano is caught once more. Stratus sits at a safe distance and probably doesn't even think about using his EMP until he must. Tries to go for the half of Nene, but he gets interrupted. Nano boosted Reaper. Was able to create space, but wasn't able to find kills. With Jonark down, Aimbot finds the kill. Libero next. And looks like the justice again of whether the storm, Matthew. And you won't see the sound barrier from Animo until New York gets a first kill in one of these fights. They're going to need a kill that's going to force EMP out. Then they hide, drop a barrier. And that's where you kind of see. Now they're going over towards Tracer, right? Tracer definitely much better at going in harassing, trying to get pickoffs than, let's say, the Reaper, right? The Reaper, you're playing very close together. There's not really an opportunity to create an early pickoff. Now that you have Tracer in play, definitely a better chance. Holt was thrown out there by Mane, but that was cancelled out by Elevote's defense matrix. Jonak wants the high ground. He'd love to sit up here if he can. Self-destruct, forces ice block in. Elevote gets Mano and the Supercharger. Again, the wind out of sails for New York. They're going to back up. Another fight with no sound barrier, another fight with no EMP is... Is this a commitment? 
without their main tank. Arno hasn't returned to the team yet. He's just trying to get some charge. They know they can't dive him because Harper's right behind him with the defense matrix. So I guess it's would have been there for free. Big, oh, it would have been a big bait if they would have fell for that. How about this one though? Stratus, oh, we can't get a hack. He gets revealed and you had to wake up early if you're going to get the better of the NYXL backline. But you lose Mano again as New York, they're desperate to try and get either pressure to force out the transcendence or an early pick to get this the EMP out. You cannot sound barrier without the EMP gone. It's it's been great that Stratus has been able to hold on to it, right? But it's also great positioning from the rest of the Justice that nobody's gotten picked off to start a spiral in New York's favor. Dronak spending a lot of time not scoping in. It's faster. Obviously, to just try and uh, nose cope a lot of that healing. Although it doesn't act like hit scan. When he does it, Libero's down again. The Justice, they're finding early picks in all of these fights. This one looks like it'll be able to carry them through. Even though Mano gets the nano boost, he can't stick to a target. And that's two down for New York. They're going to have to leave once more, and they are running out of time. It took point eight so darn quick, but they've got a minute and 20 seconds left. Well, they're trying to force the Justice to panic and use the Transcendence, use an EMP. Because, I mean, we've seen this throughout all of Overwatch since Sombra's been released, where if you have the EMP, they have to hold on to sound better, and you have not been able to manufacture a pick off for NYXL. Now you switch over to a Sombra of your own, so now you're trying to get a hack, a pick, then the EMP, and then drop your sound barrier. But look, it's been it's been great play by the Justice where they burned about four minutes off the clock. Matt, New York can't really punish Raw without a Discord orb in so many of these cases, right? They just they're using Jonak on Arnie here to try and get some sleeps and hasn't been enough. Jonak hacked, able to get away, used by the grenade before the hack came through and Raw now as well. Unable to jump, but he can still play around in this room. Libero gets removed and ooh dear. Raw needs to be a little bit careful. Arnimo's able to trade out. So New York is still in an advanced position and they have a 5v5. Nanabu's on towards Mano now. Mano gets booted midair. Nice control by Ark there. Sends the whip shot. Sends Mano off course straight into the micro rockets of Elevoke. Uh, this is such great Sombra play here from Stratus. The beat gets dropped. They backed up New York because they wanted the EMP to come out and he doesn't use it. Now you have it for the end. Finally, it held so long, but it's time to go. Aim God. Propels his team forward with the power of that transcendence and Hopper has no mech to work with. No chance really for NYXL to touch. It is overtime and Manu will have to drop eventually. He's here on the point. Notice that Libero's on the high ground trying to fight Stratus under 1v1 and he's losing. Stratus wants to push him down, but Corey is lost. Primal Rage for Manu, but he doesn't really have an easy target to pick off. He's probably looking for Aim God right now and has no idea where the Zenyatta is. There we go, he's found him. Will he better get rid of him though? Aim God is not to be trifled with and Discord all makes it hard. Mano is down. The Justice is up. And they managed to hold point B. And nobody from New York gave it a hold there. And to be honest, that one is, uh, look, it's a point A take for New York. That map is all Justice. I mean, they, they played that great in terms of Stratus holding on to the EMP. Nobody dropping early. Nobody falling for the bait of New York. Really strong play from the Washington Justice there. Yeah. Just getting early picks in all these fights, good composure, making it extremely hard for Mano to access their back line. And who knows, they don't, if they don't land a sleep dart on the Stratus at the start and things fall apart, you know, with the way they put together that point B defense, who knows what could have happened on point A. So New York pretty fortunate. They get that sleep dart at the beginning from Jonak and it just spirals everything in their favor. New York also got a lot of mileage out of that attacking May pick on point A. Elevate tried to challenge and just got frozen instantly. This time the Justice have the opportunity to be the ones to set the pace. And that will be a defensive Soldier 76 here for Libero. Who's going to talk about that? A lot like King's Row verticality here. You can kind of sprint the catwalk. Very difficult to track down, right? If your Winston jumps on one player, like jumps on the 76, the 76 rotates out. The D.Va has to make a tough choice. Do I kind of track the 76? Do I go help my Winston? It makes it very difficult for the decisions to make. The moment they stop tracking Libero, he turns up with a quick Helix rocket and someone with you know, 200 HP or less is blown up instantly. Interesting that they find not to run the 76 with the Sombra again here. So I think that could have been a pretty strong combination. They opt to go with the Tracer. So you yeah, have Nene played the 76 in the previous map, Libero played the Sombra. This time you're going to run a uh, Tracer combination with the 76. This is an Ana switch for Aim God, I'd say. Yeah. Never. Why does he not want to play the Zen here? It's just really easy for him to get picked off and left alone. Ana very, 
very bitter just personally surviving than Zenyatta. So when your tanks and whatnot go to the high ground and you want to provide healing, it's obviously more healing, but it also it's better for yourself, right? The sleep dart, the biotic grenade, a lot of tools to be able to keep yourself alive. Nano boost to make it easier for your main tank to get into formation. All right, Elevo, nice use of defense matrix. Gets most of his team up the stairs, but takes a face full as soon as he peeks. Again, Zenyatta really making life a little bit hard. Nice by Elevo there, just to boop um, Mano out of the way. He was hoping to land and get that jump pack damage onto most of the Justice. New York tries to jump down and contest. They get Roar and Elevo weak, so you'll have to have the Justice hang out here a bit, but that's going to allow Aimgod to farm up a Nano Boost here. Let's see how they decide to use it. Nene with a Pulse Bomb. The Justice are playing in close quarters. It is dangerous for them here. He's looking for a support. Doesn't stick the bomb though. And now the Justice go. Raw's gonna get Nano Boost at the Discord Orb is still. Gonna make him less durable, but that damage reduction from Ana, it goes a long way. Still, Raw's not over committing though. He's being very careful. The Justice really value just being on the point and getting tick progress than they are about getting kills, but now they have to double down and fight. Transcendence, Libero comes in with a tactical visor and Aim God goes by the way. So with Arc down, there's just no healing left to speak of and Corey and Stratus have to work around the fringes of this fight. Yes, Raw has Primal Rage, but what does he do with it? He gets Discorder and he's forced to leave. I mean, the fight's over by the time he uses it. Uh, he had the Rally being used, Nano Boost used a little bit earlier on. They have a Pulse Bomb invested in there. Mono dives into the back and he's able to put so much pressure on the supports. Jonak keeps everybody else topped up on the point with the Transcendence, Tack Visor. Just for the icing on the cake there is New York able to take that fight. Now, I, I think this is a much difficult spot to get an EMP from because if you go to the point, they'll contest it with a tank or two, and then you can just jump down Rally after the EMP comes through. How does Stratus get a good value EMP here? Like this? Let's it go, gets two, but he got Jonak. There was no Transcendence to shut down, but they still get the Zenyatta. The Justice are looking to secure themselves, at least a draw in this map by capturing point A, but they lose Stratus after the brave EMP 4A. Can they get more? Losing Aim God here is not a good sign for the home team. They need to get... The full capture on point A, and so far they've been held to 83. Where does it all go? Can you commit? Or is it worth just stepping back, man, and trying to go for something else? Because they're not making any progress here. They have to, and the EMP, you get Jonak out of it, but they're allowed to rally, and then they're at the end. That's the tough decisions I was talking about that Elevo needs to make. Roar is low, but he's also just getting pelted by the 76 up on the high ground. He has no defense matrix for everybody. What happens? He just kind of stands in open space and gets d because he has no great option there. Man, the Justice, they start off this map so well with such a staunch defense at point B, but that doesn't matter if they can't capture point A themselves. A nano boost here from Main God. Bit of a Hail Mary, it's gonna have to be. That looked deadly. The hot self the strike in there, the bomb! Aim God's down! He had the nano boost! Was that the last hope of Washington fizzling out? Less than 10 seconds remain. Then it returns back to the point and oh, Raw without his honor. He's looking so low. He had to go and do it the old fashioned way and get his own health pack. Aim God, can he get back to the fight in time? No, Libero shuts Stratus down. The tactical visor without Elivo to protect his team. The Justice are struggling to stand up. Roar is taken down. And with the last seconds of overtime tick away, that will be it, NYXL. Their fifth win of the season. And the Justice looks so good in the first half of that map, but if you can't follow up your defense with a lethal attack, you are not going to challenge a team like New York. And it's just a little play from Nene there, which is just so big brain. There's, he sees Roar. Roar's weak. Roar's waiting for the health pack. What does Nene do? He double blinks in. Stratus' translocator is on the ground. He blows it up. Stratus is stuck in front of the door. He can't get back to the health pack. He's just stuck in the middle of the map as Sombra, and everybody just jumps on top of him. They're able to take him out, and everything falls apart after that. But New York looked much different once Nene was inserted into the lineup. They looked really strong today, but I also think, although it's a one-on-one -on -one weekend for the Justice, they had a very good showing here as well. The Justice show they can definitely hang with teams like NYXL. Absolutely. And Elivo has given me the same vibe as I got from Mecco in those first few matches for Houston when they struggled so much. A diva that is just trying to do so much and maybe trying to do too yes. much. Yeah, yeah, potentially, right? I mean, well, also a lot of the compositions that New York threw at them with the high ground, the verticality, bringing the 76 in play, it made it much harder for Elivo to really 
you know, where am I using my matrons? How are we going to do about it? Because we haven't seen a ton of 76 uh, on some of these maps, right? It's been a lot of Tracer Sombra, or we've seen a lot of May. That's right, but we see plenty of variety one way or another. We're going to talk about our player of the match, someone that we feel made a huge impact when they came into the lineup. Yeah, was Nene. He comes in, shows some Soldier 76 on the defense half, so both of these sort of uh, obviously on the hybrid map and the assault map, but when it came to the tracer, he was able to pressure Corey. And I think it was a huge difference. They lose map number one, and just the, the aggression that he played with, and just the ability to just duel Corey head on, was a difference maker here for NYXL today. It may not be like they're, they're statistically best player or whatnot, but he made the biggest difference here today, so that's why he's our player of the match. Yeah, and you can see that final blows to death's race shows about two, which definitely puts him in the top echelon of players. Well, he was number one when we looked at it earlier. And he's probably not going to be leaving that spot no. anytime soon. Also, a lot of eliminations. He's getting involved, very active. And I mean, that kind of play style, you ask any Tracer player, especially these guys at the highest level, that's exhausting. Yes. Absolutely exhausting to have to constantly be around, keep yourself alive, and also deal with stuff like Diva yeah. and that. I mean, we're not done here from the Anthem, by the way. We still got another match to come. We finally get to see a glimpse of how the Atlanta Reign have bounced back from last week's matches. They're going to be going up against Excited. the Boston Uprising. And there were some strong words shared from Fusions after yesterday. They're expected oh, to come yeah. out to be dominant against this team. Can Atlanta bounce back? Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. It's all going to go down right here after the break.